Whispers would be the key in unlocking the mystery of why civilization first formed here at Corral. Because with rivers had come a huge technological advance, irrigation. This is the simplest possible kind of irrigation system. All you needed to do was to take a hoe or something like that and um, scratch uh, a little ditch from the river to a piece of land and you could tell that you were going at the right angle because the water would follow right in. The valleys near Corral are crisscrossed with ancient irrigation trenches and irrigation would have transformed the desert. Once I bring water off of that river to the Peruvian desert, that desert blooms. Once I get water to it, it just is the most productive land you could possibly hope for. Jonathan believed Corral was once a huge Garden of Eden. Here in the middle of the desert, it would have been a vast oasis of fruit and vegetable fields. It would have made Corral one of the wonders of the ancient world. And irrigation led to something else. The thing that would turn out to be the crucial innovation behind the rise of civilization at Corral. Ruth's researchers had begun to look for the kinds of vegetables the people of Corral had been eating. In amongst all the beans and nuts, they found cotton seeds, lots of them. In fact, cotton seemed to be everywhere. Casi todas las construcciones tienen Practically every building contained cotton seeds or cotton fibers or textiles. We were very surprised at the beginning at the sheer amount of cotton. Some of the cotton was used for clothes, but it had another use that had nothing to do with corral, fishing nets. This net was found at the coast not far from Corral. It's nearly 5,000 years old, as old as Corral itself. It was then that it all became clear to Ruth. Corral was engaged in trade. It made cotton nets for the fishermen who sent fish as payment. A trading link was established between the fishermen and the farmers. The farmers grew the cotton, which the fishermen needed to make the nets, and the fishermen gave them, in exchange, shellfish and dried fish. This was Ruth Shadi's great insight. Trade in cotton led to a huge, self-sustaining system. Corral made the cotton for the nets. With the nets, the fishermen could catch more food. More food meant more people could live at Corral to grow more cotton. And so, Corral became a booming trading center. And the trade spread. Goods have been found from as far away as Ecuador, the Andes, and, of course, the rainforests, hundreds of miles away. There is trade with people in the mountains, the jungle, and also with the coastal people from further away. There is a trading network which is far more widespread than just the internal trade within the valleys around Corral. It seemed then that they'd found the answer to that great archaeological quest. The driving force that led to the birth of civilization at Corral 5,000 years ago was not warfare. It seemed to be trade. Ruth Shadi, the archaeologist from Peru, had cracked it. 
looks like exchange is what's unifying this system together and is kind of emerging as the most effective theory we have today to explain how this system developed. And amazingly, this trade seems to have built a contented world. There were no battles, no fortresses. Civilization in Peru appeared to have been born of a time of peace. Or had it? Just as everything seemed to be solved, Ruth's team made a chance discovery that threatened to undermine everything. In one of the grander houses, perhaps home to one of the elite, they spotted something unusual. We thought we had finished work on this section. We looked at the floor and we didn't think there was anything else there. But when we came back the following day, we noticed that there was a slight dip in one section of the floor of the building. At first, they thought they'd found a personal object, perhaps an ornament. When they looked closer, they could see it was a reed basket. It had lain under the floor of a house for nearly 5,000 years. Ruth cleaned the dust away, she found something much more disturbing inside. Human bones. They'd stumbled upon the body of a small child, perhaps even a baby. Suddenly, it raised a frightening possibility. Perhaps the people of Corral started a tradition which was to be common in later civilizations in the Americas. Human sacrifice. Perhaps Corral was not a civilization of peace and happiness after all. Perhaps it was brutal and held together not by trade, but fear. It became vital to find out how this child had died. Was it really a victim of some barbaric practice? The body was sent back to the labs for analysis, and with it, the objects found buried alongside. Ruth was surprised to see the baby had been placed in the fetal position before being buried. And even more surprised to see the body had been carefully wrapped in several layers of fine cloth. Alongside the body were small stones. They'd been carefully polished and holes drilled through their center. They had to be beads, perhaps of a necklace. Then they examined the bones. They were of a two-month-old baby. And then, slowly, each bone was examined for signs of violence. But there were none. They suspected this child had died of natural causes. It had been lovingly prepared for burial. This first citizen of American civilization was not a sacrifice, but a much-loved child. Corral really had been a city of peace, after all. So this is the real story of Corral. In the desert, a city of pyramids arose, built on riches gained peacefully through trade. It spawned a civilization that lasted unbroken 
for more than 4,000 years. It is a story that may yet contain the answer to archaeology's greatest question, why human beings crossed the Great Divide from the simple to the civilized. Caral was the first city with the first central government ever to be created. Caral changes all our current thinking about the origins of civilization. Because it seems that 5,000 years ago, they had no need for warfare. Caral enjoyed a peace that lasted almost a millennium. An achievement unmatched in the modern world. That's a period of a thousand years of peace. I can't have a thousand years of peace if warfare is natural to human beings. Warfare is part of human nature. You don't get a millennium of no war. Perhaps that is Corral's real legacy. Human civilization was not born in bloodshed and battle. Warfare was a later part of the human story. Great things can come from peace. This is one of the most breathtaking parts of the world. Woo! <laughs> the Adirondack Park was the new model for humans and wild spaces coexisting. The history of the Adirondack 